Hello, welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop board game bag check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your game and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, the question we're answering is, what's in the box in regards to this? This is a newly delivered Kickstarter version of Gorinto, which should match the retail version. This is... Um, Back this on Kickstarter, I did a preview of this game before the thing launched. This is Gorinto from Grand Gamers Guild, which I honestly think may be one of the best modern abstract games to have come out in years. I've been comparing it to other games like Azul and Sagrada. I am a big fan of this game. But I only got to see a prototype version with wooden tiles with stickers on it. And this promises to be way more impressive than the game I got to preview. So I am really looking forward to checking out what's in the box. And I invite you to join me as we open up Gorinto from Grand Gamers Guild. So here we have the box from Gorinto by Richard Yanner. I'll just flip around the outside edges here. Uh, this is a game for one to four... Sorry, it could be one to four players. Yeah, one to four players. There you go. 30 minute playing time. Um, there is a fifth player expansion, which is a Kickstarter exclusive. And you stay till the end of the video. I will be showing that off as well. So we're going to crack this open. And the main thing I really want to see in this game are the tiles. Yeah, look at that right on top. So first thing we have are some little player markers in the shape of a Gorinto shrine. Or a Gorinto what I like there is, if you note, know, there's no green and red, so they stuck to nice um, colorblind friendly colors. There are one of these for each of the players. And then we have the tiles. So I'm just impressed by this. Like, look at this. This is not something you usually see in a board game box, um, except maybe Upwards, but I opened a copy of Upwards so many years ago, I don't, I don't quite remember what it looked like. But like, look at these pile of tiles here. So, we're going to crack this open. It is taped shut. It's in a Ziploc bag. But there's a significant amount of tape on here. I don't know if I'm going to keep these in here. Okay, I got to say those stack really nice. So, I'm going to bring these over here so you can kind of see them. So, each of the different um, colors also has a symbol on them to be able to tell them apart. And they represent the different elements and the different steps of the Gorinto. So there's five different colors, uh, earth, air, fire, wind, and void, if I remember correctly. I may be off on that, but I got to say, look at this. I am able to pick up that whole stack without them coming apart. This is actually a step above. Okay, so some not quite as much. Now, no, that's not important to the game. There is no point where you want to be able to pick up the whole stack, but I am impressed by how well these are sticking together. Look, I can turn it upside down. Nice, thick plastic. These don't feel like they're going to get beat up very easy. Um, I can't, I think that's screen printed on. So I guess over time, there is a chance that might get scratched up. That's something I won't be able to tell until playing this game many, many times. Because these tiles are going to go into a bag, which are going to pull out. So what I'm going to do is I'll just grab one of the other colors here. So this is the wind tiles. And again, stack really nicely in any direction as I drop a wind tile. And you have plenty of these in different colors. Here's the orange, the fire. Wow, I like dropping these. The fire tokens. And again, all of these stack nice. These, these, this is a quality component. You don't find stuff like that in board games very often. We have a, a bonus Ziploc baggie. You've got the round marker, which is a Gorinto. It's really well done. It's got the different symbols on there and the five layers, which represent each of these elements. That's a nice solid chunky piece. I dig it. Then you have a first player marker. That is a heavy, wow. This is a metal coin, basically. So what you have here is a thick, look at this, look how thick that is. Thick metal coin, showing the five elements on one side and just a, a generic pattern, I guess, on the other side. This is a heavy chunk of metal. That is a really cool first player token. Note, this may be a Kickstarter exclusive. I apologize, like I said, I did kickstart this game. Um, then there is a small expansion included. Um, this is the Dragon expansion, so we have a little pack containing the rules. What I haven't seen is the rules for Gorinto yet, but I'm sure they're in here. You know what, I'll crack this open just to see if there's anything else in here. Yeah, 
Yes. So, no, it's just in multiple languages. So what you have is four different languages of the same thing. So you have the, the this whole thing. So, so not language dependent in the fact, which is a good note to this game. There is, except for the rule book, there is no language in this game that you need to know. There's no, no, except for reading the rule book, which I assume I'm probably going to find the rule book in four different copies, color, four different languages. And then we have the dragon tiles. Uh, these are for the expansion. When playing the game, they count as wild tiles. Should be five of these. That's correct. There are. So we have five dragon tiles, similar to the other ones. And what I didn't do, which I think is probably important, which I'll grab a couple here, is stack different colors. Now, one of the things that was very difficult in the preview version of this game to play is you need to be able to see what the bottom tile in a stack was, and that was very difficult. With these, it's very clear and easy to see that I have a white, then a gray, then an orange here. Bonus points. Put the dragons back together. For now, I'm just going to toss them in the top of the box because you don't want to watch me put it away. Then we have a very nice bag. It says Gorinto on it. This is where all your tiles are going to come in. You're going to draw them out. What I like here is it's nice wide, so no problem getting your hand in and out. All right, what do we got? We finally got the rules, and it, as I said, in multiple languages. So we have four rule books in here. So all I really care about is the English rules myself, but they are here, and what's nice is they actually um, credited like the people who help with the translation on these. So this is going to walk you through how to play Garinto. Huge props right away to Grand Gamers Guild for showing me every component I should have had in this box. I love that, seeing absolutely every single one of them here in one place. Looks like we got some really cool looking player boards. So yes, it looks like the, the first player marker there, or sorry, the, the turn marker must be a Kickstarter exclusive because it's just showing me a cardboard stand that you assemble. Um, same thing as the, the, the coin looks like it would be a cardboard coin. So there are a couple upgrades in here, which is worth noting. As far as I know, the rest of the components are all the same. Uh, looks like nice, clear rule book, lots of examples explaining how the different tiles work. This is a unique tile drafting game where you are going to put tiles on the board, which will let you take tiles to put onto your personal player board. Now, this isn't a review or how to play, so I'm not going to get into more details than that. All I'll just tell you is I did really enjoy the preview, and I'm looking forward to playing with the full finished rules, and I'm not sure if anything did change. I uh, note there is a solo mode, which is pretty cool, in the back. I don't remember that from the preview at all. And then alternate landscapes, so there are different ways to set up the board. So what we should have here is a board you're going to lay the tiles out on. Ooh, nice and spaced out. So there is an improvement from when I played it. The tiles were all very close together in the preview version. So it was kind of hard to see if there were two tiles next to each other. Now they're nice and spread out. And what you're going to do at the beginning of the game is fill this board based on one of those patterns. And then on the outside, you're going to have piles you can draft from. So those are going to run on the outside. This is called the path. And then this is a reminder of how the different tiles work. Now, I'm, again, I'm not going to teach you how to play here, but I just kind of wanted to show off. I really like how spaced out these are. Now, I will say, I would have much preferred a nice 3D board here that these slot into like a game of upwards. But I realize that would have been cost prohibitive, but that would have been an awesome upgrade. So what I'm hoping is this game does well enough that someone will convince Mark at Grand Gamers Guild to do a deluxe edition. And then we'll come out with a, a 3D mountain. This is called the mountain. Come up with a 3D mountain for us to stack our tiles on. So here we go, one-sided board. So I think it's a bit of a missed opportunity. You probably could have done some other different type of layout on this side. What I would have liked to have seen too is a number here for the default layout for the game telling you how many tiles to stack everywhere. So I don't have to grab the rule book to figure out what the layout should be. But again, those are nice to have. Still happy with what I'm seeing here. We have a deck of cards here, significant deck of cards. That does seem longer than I remember. All right, for cards, what we have here is different scoring cards. So every time you play a game of Garinto, it's going to be different because different scoring cards are going to be in play. So this is one that says score each stack that is the same height as one or more of your other stacks. So while you're building up your personal supply of tiles, the only ones that are going to score are the ones that are the same height. And there are a ton of these different ones, which adds a ton of replayability to the game. So I'm not going to go through all of them, but like, look at all the different types of scoring cards here. Look at this. There's tons. This is way more than I got to see in the preview. Way, way more. Tons and tons of scoring cards. That That is a lot. That is a huge deck of scoring cards uh, with a shadow of a Garinto on the back. That's that's a deck. Look at that. I'm impressed. That, that makes me happy to see. 
There's an improvement over the version I got the preview. And then at the end of the, each game, there's going to be some end game scoring. And what it is, it's randomized. It's going to be two of your colored tiles. So these are the tiles to represent those. So again, there's just one of these for each of the different colors in the game, for each of the different elements. And you're randomly going to pick two of those, and those are going to score points just for people who've collected all of that color, the most of that color. Then there is a... So the, here's a couple of rule variant. There's a rule variant included called Seasons of Change. So it looks like there's something that would actually change the scoring cards midway through. Again, something I didn't see in the preview, so that's a cool addition to me. Uh, in all four languages, again, so there's two cards. Next, we get to a central board. This is where you organize things. So these are going to be your end game scoring cards. Those are going to be your two scoring cards. This marks your four rounds. And this is your score track, where those little tiny Garinto pieces would go on. Then we have, and wow, these are much shinier and nicer than the, the version I saw. These are the player boards. So I'm going to punch one out now. Wow, that came out nice, really nice. This is where you're going to keep track of your own personal tiles, what you've collected. So your void tiles go here, your fire tiles go here. Nice, it's got the, the Grinto shape in the background. Definitely an upgrade from what I saw. Nice, thick card. No complaints there at all. And that should be about it. So what do we have here? All right, stuff I have no idea what it is. So these must be some rule variants. So I will note, here's the Garinto. So I do have the upgraded one. Here's the first player token. Again, I have an upgraded one. This is for if you get past 50 points. This is for randomizing turn order, but I have no idea what these foxes are for. So this is something else that was added to the game since I first got to try it. I'm looking forward to discovering what that is. I don't know what these tiles are, but it looks like they're showing different parts along the mountain, along the path on the side of the mountain. So I don't know, maybe these are for, oh, no, what I bet? I bet you these are for the solo rules and the foxes who you play against. That's, that's, a, that's a guess, though. It's not, I don't know that for sure. So my guess is you're going to draw one of these tiles and the fox is going to draft that tile and place it. But I don't know. I, I honestly didn't know there were even solo rules included in here. So you have it. There we go. Bottom of the box. And again, in four languages. So multinational game here. That's what you get with Garinto. So I'm going to pack this up. And then I'll share some final thoughts. And then I've got a bonus, which I am just going to be messy and hate myself later for tossing everything in loose here. Gorinto from Grand Gamers Guild. Now, what I have here is the fifth player expansion, which was a Kickstarter bonus. So by backing the game on Kickstarter, I did also receive this fifth player expansion, which we're going to crack open and take a look at what we get. So I expect it <laughs> to be pretty obvious. So what we do get is a new player board and a new player color. We get a new little Gorinto pawn for marking your score. There are the rules for the fifth player expansion. Um, yeah, in all four languages. And then additional tiles, because if you play with more players, you don't want to run out of tiles. Tiles are, of course, the exact same quality in the base game. So that is what you get inside the fifth player expansion for Garinto, which I honestly, at this point, don't know if it will be available separately or not. I'm just going to toss this out because I don't see any need for it. And then I am going to do an important test here and see if that fits in the box here without having to do anything silly. I really hope it does. I think it'll be a tight fit, but I think it'll work. So yeah, that fits there, no problem. This fits here. There you go. With the expansion, everything does fit in the box. Thank you, Grand Gamers Guild. I hate when I get an expansion, it doesn't fit in the base game box. So there you go. That is what you get inside the box for Gorinto from Grand Gamers Guild. Honestly, this is one of the best abstract games I've ever played. I am really looking forward to checking out the production copy, which is way nicer than the preview I got to take a look at. Really impressive game, great looking components, solo rules as well included. Uh, this looks fantastic. I am really looking forward to sitting down and playing this. I will admit, there are a couple things I would have improved or I would like to have seen improved. Like, I would have loved a 3D mountain to the tile slot into. But I get it, the game would probably be way too expensive at that point. Um... I dig it. It looks great. Um, I'm actually somewhat blown away by how nice those tiles are. Those are those are nice. They stack nice. They feel solid in your hands. So that is what you get inside the box for Gorinto from Grand Gamers Guild, as well as a look at the five player expansion, which as far as I know is a Kickstarter exclusive, but you may be able to get in the future or maybe from the board game geek store or something like that. 
Uh, again, I dig this game. I am really looking forward to getting this played. I'm hoping to play this weekend. In two days, I should get my copy played. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find me all over the internet as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. You can find my website at tabletopbellhop.com. And if you dig this video, you can consider, please consider tipping your bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. If you are into podcasts, you can also find me on the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, where myself and my co-host Sean answer your gaming and game night questions. If you do have a question for us, you can send that to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. That's it for me tonight. I'm going to be going downstairs and reading some rules from Garinto. So good night and game on.